want to jump right into the Word. We started a series a couple weeks ago called Filters, um, and how many of you know this is not the time for us to live a fake life? You know, and that's one thing that Filters allows us to do. We live these fake lives, these fake identities, because we're a Put it on filters. And, you know, social media is a great resource. It's a great tool to um, help us live a life that is based on a filter, okay? Um, if you go on Instagram, they got so many filters right now to make you look like something that you are really not. And the sad thing, a lot of people have come to believe the filters. They, they, they really believe they look like that. They really believe they have a size four waist. Come on, somebody. They know it's a 14, but the filter has deceived them to think it's so. <laughs> and so we, be, we begin to believe our filters, our filtered life versus our real life. And I'm telling you, there becomes times and seasons in our life where we are faced or forced to deal with our real life. And we could be on social media and putting filters on things and hiding blemishes and things like that. But there becomes a point in our life where we have to face ourselves. There becomes a point where the lights are off, um, there's no noise going on, and all you are left with is just you and the thoughts in your head. And I'm telling you, God does not desire that we live a filtered life. And so today, I want to just talk about um, image issues. Image issues. Because you know what? A fake life is a tired life. Trying to live like someone else or trying to live as someone else, it is very tiresome. You know, that's the reason why some people are emotionally tired right now, particularly on social media, because we're constantly trying to put on these different images and these different things that social media is putting out there. And we're trying to put those things on and we fail to realize I'm in a emotional battle with trying to keep up with an identity that's not even real. And in many cases, it's causing psychological trauma in the lives of so many people. People. Deuteronomy 6.14 says, do not follow other gods, the gods of the peoples around you, for the Lord your God, watch this here, he is a jealous God, and his anger will burn against you. Why? And he will destroy us from the face of the earth. Why? Because he does not want us to have any of the gods against or for um, that we are representing above him. For the Lord your God, who is among you, is a jealous God. God, God, God. And, 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 and you may be saying, well, I don't bow down to no, we bow down to anything that we exalt above God. We bow down to any and everything that we give more attention to God. And when I say more, I'm not talking about trying to do 50, 50, 20, 20. I'm saying that that's where your energy is at. That's where your focus is at. God is not looking for 20, 20, 50, 50. That's not how it is measured up because you can't say, well, I got to be to work for eight hours, so I can't worship God for eight hours straight. I get that. But living that lifestyle where God, Jesus, is the center of your life, and God says, do not follow other gods, the gods of the people around you, for the Lord our God is a jealous God. So we have to break the spirit of Baal. What's the spirit of Baal? It was the, a fertility God. It was a God that they worshiped that was really tied to sex. And so when we understand that idea of this fertility God, it was more so about intimacy, having intimacy with the wrong things, being in love with the wrong things, having our heart tied to the wrong things. We got to be careful or you will be enticed to turn away and worship other gods and bow down to them. Here's three ways that happens. Do mammon, the God of possessions. The, we, we bow down to mammon, which is the God of possession, stuff. We, 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 we got to have more stuff, more stuff, more stuff. I made a commitment a few months ago that I would not buy another item of clothes because I do not need it. And I have followed through. And the only thing I said I will allow myself to buy this year only will be my suit for the John Maxwell event. Come on, somebody. I put that in there. The only thing I can buy is my suit for the job because I am going, I'm telling y'all now, I am going sharp. I'm going to be the best looking thing up on that stage. Come on. Come on. Shaking John Max one hand. <laughs> but man, in the God, I'm like, Corey, you don't need, uh, if, I thought my wife had more clothes than me. Had more clothes. I, for the past few years, I have not realized how much clothes I was heaping up. I need another closet. Come on, somebody. 
She got the biggest closet. I need a whole room. Not literally, but it feels that way. And I literally said to myself, you don't need anything else. You got clothes with tags on it still. You have clothes you haven't worn yet. We, 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 mammy, God bless you, beautiful. <laughs> I don't know. And she was saying, yep, exactly right. You're right. Yeah, you got too many clothes. And what she was saying, but um, I'll take that. But mammon, the God of possessions, let's be careful that we're not caught up on this mindset that we got to keep heaping stuff unto our staff, more stuff, more stuff, more stuff. Some of you can have more money in your savings account if you are not so caught up on possessions. Come, come on. Some of your bank accounts, your savings account can be, be heavy right now. You can have six months saved up right now, but you're more focused on more stuff, more stuff, more stuff. And we need to break the spirit of mammon off of our lives. Can I get an amen in here this morning? You know you don't need that. You know you don't need that dress, girl. You know you don't need it. It just looks good. It's on sale. It's a sale for them, but not for you. Come on, it's on sale. Well, that, that's not your sale. You got a bigger vision and a bigger plan. And I see y'all ladies saying this, this, you know, I'm not stopping. I'm going to keep on talking because I'm trying to help the brothers out. Come on, man. <laughs> come on, come on. And this needs to be a real conversation in some of our homes. Are we heaping up unnecessary possessions? Are we guarding ourselves from storms and trials that will come? Because you do know that God will give us warning about storms in the earth. And if we learn how to steward a lot of this stuff versus eating this, many of you will not have to worry about many storms that may come our way. I pray today that we break the spirit of mammon off of our life. Not only mammon, but the God Baal, which is the God of power. God of power. Some people ju just want more power. Just, just, just caught up on, on, on just wanting power, want a, authority. And oftentimes we want this power and authority not for the embitterment of other people, but we want the power just to be able to control and manipulate and, and puff ourselves up. God doesn't mind giving us authority and power. Matter of fact, he wants to give us authority and power, but to serve other people people, to make a difference in the earth, to change the world. If you're trying to gain power unto yourself just to make an image of yourself and, and it to be all about you, we have to be careful because we find ourselves in the spirit of Baal. And then assure the God of pleasure. Some of us, it's all about just being pleasure. Just want to be satisfied. You know, I, 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 one of the most abused that, that's going to become an abused word in this season it is, is, is authentic. I'm just being my authentic self. And you know, and we need to be authentic. But I, I, I see this little, 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 this little eerie thing coming where a lot of people are going to use this authentic thing in ways that really is going to get sinister and somewhat sickening and demonic. Because being authentic does not mean that you just go tell people all. Being authentic doesn't mean that you just say what you want to say and hurting people in the world. I'm just keeping it real. Well, well that's the mindset. I'm, a, I'm just keeping it real. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a man. I can say what I want to say. I... No, no, we, we are hurting people in the, I see many people being hurt in the process, and we use this word, which is a, a, a true word, a real word, if used in the proper context, really being who we, we are from the inside out, but if being authentic, meaning hurting other people and tearing other people down, then that's a character issue. That's a character issue with you where if that's your authentic self, then you need to go get some help. Come on, somebody. Because there's some, some junk, there's some issues, there's some trauma in your life that needs to be dealt with. With if you're uh, if you've been authentic keeps you away from God, I'm telling you that's not God. If being authentic keeps you away from church, you know I'm just taking care of myself. I'm just if 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 taking care of yourself keeps you away from God, I'm telling you that is not God. That is a trap and that's a ploy from the enemy to move you away from God. 
And so I see a lot of people right now, I'm just taking care of myself. I'm going to I'm gonna get back to church one day, and I'm telling you, not even just get back to the building, but to even any type of worship, you have to be careful. That it's a trap for the enemy to get you in isolation, to get you by yourself so that he can bring you down, down, down. And so we find ourselves, as long as we're being pleased and pleasure. I'm telling you, mark my word now, 12 o'clock in America, if we're not careful as a church for many Christians who are solid walking with God, 12 o'clock noon, and I will go so far as to say 11 o'clock a.m. for many believers who are committed to going to worship, that's going to become a new hour for them in which they just go out and they sip on some whatever, whatever. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not knocking your sip, sipping. That's not my point. My point is now We've been out of church so long that now noonday, 11 o'clock for us is just we just put on our morning clothes and we just go out and have breakfast somewhere. Come on. That's what, what 11 o'clock has turned to for many believers. We have abandoned the house of God and all we want now is pleasure. I don't know about you. I have come to realize for almost 20 years of being saved, the more I serve God, the more I put God first, he gives me opportunity to get pleasure. And the pleasures that he gives me, I don't have to worry about somebody taking it away from me. Come on. The folks talking about, you know, they're just getting lit every weekend. Every Friday, they're getting lit. They, get, they party every, you getting lit every Friday? Every Friday, you party every Friday. You don't even qualify to party right now. You haven't done nothing yet. To qualify to go party. See, you qualify to go party when you don't put your time in and done some work. Come on, somebody. But you ain't worked for two weeks. Don't know how you're going to pay the rent in two weeks. But you out there on Facebook, I'm living my best life, but the rent is due in two weeks. The light bill is due in five days. But you out there filtering it up, got stress in your head like, I don't know how I'm going to pay for this, but I deal with it when it comes. Come on. Fake life is tiresome. It, it, it's fun in the moment, but that's a hefty price to pay later. And social media will have you chasing and trying to be like somebody else who's struggling for real. They, you see the, 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 and many times it's not even a fake part you see, it's just a part of the life. Because some of it, it's not even fake, it, it's actually a real life. But that's just part of the life, and we begin to say, man, I want that life. You can't want somebody's life without wanting all of what they got. When you say I want it, you got to say I want everything that comes with that. Genesis 3, 6 says, when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eyes and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate as well. God had just told her, don't eat of that tree, but that pleasure, she wanted pleasure from the thing that God said don't touch. Now, mind you, he told them, you can eat from any tree in the garden that you want to. Look at the liberality. Look at the freedom. He said, eat from every tree but this one here. And isn't that not like us? God gives us so much access, so much freedom, but the very thing he say don't do is the very thing that we touch. And the devil gets in our mind and make us think that God's trying to hold something from us. No, he's trying to protect us from something. See, he... God gave them free access to every tree in the garden, but that God of pleasure stepped in and said, touch something that may can cost your marriage. Touch something that may can cost your peace of mind. Uh, touch something that may can take away your joy. It, it, it may be pleasing for the moment, and he used that as the, as the, uh, 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 um, the skill or the, his, his cunningness to get us to buy into this thing because for the moment it's pleasurable. But we don't realize that momentary pleasure has a long-term effect that will cost us more than we want to pay. Matthew 4, 3 says, the tempter came to him and said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. He says, if you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down. Look at the devil. He's in his head. All of this is in his mind. The devil is not standing. He's tempting him in his mind the same way he do us. 
It's always in your mind that I'm leaving. I'm done with this marriage right now. I'm out of here. It's all, it all starts right here. Saying something we shouldn't do, do something that we shouldn't do, or saying something we shouldn't say, it all starts right here. The, the enemy is sitting right there saying, go off on them. Go off on them. Give them the bird. Give them the bird. Give them the bird. If you start, if you're still driving and you're giving people the bird and you've been saved for any period of time, you need to be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> now, that should have been a low hanging fruit deliverance right there. Come on, somebody. Now, I know some deliverance may take some time, but that's a low hang, <laughs> that's a low hanging fruit deliverance. You right here lifting up your hand and driving. Now, if you worshiping God, praise Jesus, then cool. But we're going to leave it right there. He says, again, the devil <laughs> took him to a very high mountain. He kept bothering with him. And I'm telling you, the enemy can be relentless about bringing you down. He want to present opportunities of pleasure to you to bring that thing down. And we are not wise enough. We're not smart enough. But we just want to be satisfied and be pleased in our flesh. Don't realize that, man, he is setting us up. He is setting you up for your destruction. He said, kept taking him up to higher places. 1 John 2.15 says, do not love the world or anything in the world. If someone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And this love is more so talking about that you're so in love with just the world, the way the world operates, that, 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 that you would do anything that it tells you to do. It says, it's for everything in the world, the cravings of sinful man, the lust of the eyes and the boasting of what he has and does comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and it desires pass away, but the man who does the will of God lives forever. We need to move from a selfie-centered life to an in-him-centered life. It's not on the screen. We need to move from a selfie-centered life to an in him -centered Center life. Our life needs to be centered around his mind, his vision, and his plan that he has for my life. Like I said, for these children, he has a plan. I'm telling you, God has a plan better for your marriage than you do. I know you don't them went to a a, a, a a board party, whatever those parties call those those uh, vision. I know you don't been to vision board parties and uh, made a vision. God has a better vision than that for you. Do you think God's trying to withhold something from you? No, he has a big future for you. He has a better plan for your life. And so we need to move from a selfie-centered life to an in-him-centered life. We use the noise of media in our lives to drown out the things we rather not face. I'm saying again, we use the noise of media, social media, Instagram, all of that. We use the noise of media in our lives to drown out the things we rather not face. We go on social media many times to check out of our reality. And then we, we, we get so entrenched in what we're looking at and we're reading, it somehow psychologically trips our mind and we can put ourselves in those worlds as if it's really happening. Filters are a form of medication for some to escape their real life. People are you, uh, uh, and, and I can prove this to you. If you are a filter um, center person and you use filters like crazy, and watch this here, not just filters talking about Instagram. I'm saying filters when you come into church and somebody asks you how you're doing. You say, oh, I'm great. You know you're lying. Be honest one time. Come on, come on, come on. And, 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 and let's see if you can be honest. And if you can't, I'm telling you, that, that's a sign to you that you are medicating off of your filters. That your filter is a form of medication. If you actually are using social media filters a lot, use that as an example. Don't use filters at all for a full year. You're already battling right now with me just even putting that in the atmosphere. I can't do that. I'm, 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 yeah, that's a sign to you that you are medicating off of these things and you cannot live. You cannot live without your fake life. It's not even you. It's a fake filter, but the struggle of not using it is so difficult. 
it's because you have become medicated. You know how people who, who get on pain medicine and sometimes it's hard to get off of it because now they are addicted to it? The reason why some people can't, they look on Instagram now and they put it down, ain't nothing changed in five seconds. But they... And this is how you look. You need to see how crazy we look, y'all. <laughs> that, that, that's how you look. That's exactly. And if, and if you can't say, if you, if, if you can't stop that, you say, you know what, okay, I, I don't have to do that. I'm putting this up and I'm not going to look all day. If there's a struggle, it's a great possibility that you are addicted. And you think because you're not drinking wine or alcohol or watching porn, you, you ain't got no struggles. Most of the mental issues that people are having right now <laughs> is this basic stuff that is rewriting your brains. And if you are not careful, we are in a world of trouble. Look what Genesis 1.26 says. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image. Somebody say, I'm in God's image. It says, in, in our likeness so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky. See, God, God wants us to dominate and have authority, but we send our domination and authority in images that don't even make any sense. It says here, and over all the creatures that move along the ground, so God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them male and female, and he created them. Thinking about the image of God, he was an image that controlled and dominated and spoke things into existence with the power of his mouth. That's why he could say the power of life and death is in your tongue. That's why he said, Adam, come here. Whatever you name the animals, that's what it's going to be. I want you to act like me, act like a speaking spirit in the earth and call those things that are not as though they were. And we are losing the capacity to to dominate and speak things in existence because we are so close to the world. We are so close to it because we want to be accepted and we want to be like everybody else, just like the children of Israel that said we want a king like every other nation. We don't want to just worship and serve God. We want um, an earthly man to dictate and tell us what to do. And that was never God's agenda for mankind. God said, no, I want to be in your heart. I don't want you to have to look on the outside for someone to control you. No, I want to minister to you from the inside out. But we're constantly looking for outside affirmations when God has already affirmed us. He says, woman, you are fearfully and wonderfully made, that you are the apple of his eye, that you are the head and not the tail, you are above and not beneath, you're the lender. He's already affirmed you. He's already said that you are great. And we're constantly looking for affirmation from somebody around us that really can't give you no true affirmation. Our true affirmations come from whom God says that we are. Is this making sense to you guys on this morning? Look what it says here in Romans 1.21. It says, for although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God, nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile to their foolish hearts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools. Although they went to church every Sunday. Although they knew a few scriptures. Although they participated in the 21 days of prayer, you know, they weren't consistent, but they participated in it because it was the, the religious thing to do. Because, you know, we all know how to look like church. We all know how to put on church. Matter of fact, it's in our culture that we go to church so we can look like church and act like church and really have no real connection with the church. <sighs> Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like a mortal human being and birds and animals. And we, we exchange the image of God, the power of God for the images that we see down here. We, 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 we exchange the power in the image of God with some social media image that we see, and we, because I can see it and touch it, I believe in that more than I believe in the God that made me. And most of these people, you don't even know, you'll never see them. You believe in them more than you believe in God. Come on, somebody. 
Half of these people don't even care about you. You got 5,000 friends, 95% of them don't even know you. And then you get mad when they don't like your post. They, 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 they. Who cares? Do you even know how social media works? Many of them won't even have an opportunity to see your post because social algorithms have it all set up. It's all about money. It's all about business. I'm deleting y'all if y'all don't like this post. I did, but I, I, I did just, uh, Lord, have mercy. Can I get 50 people to let me know you there? Man, they don't understand how algorithms work. They don't understand how Facebook works. I know I got a lot of friends out there, and y'all don't, that need, that, that hunger for attention, that need to be affirmed. And that's why we go, do they see me? And then we make our pictures as, as we, we filter it up as, because even in the systems of Instagram, the, the pictures that get elevated in Instagram is the most polished pictures. That's all in the algorithms of Instagram. Your, the, the more polished the picture is, the more ability for it to be getting lifted, and then the more likes it get, then it has the more ability to get lifted even the more. It's a game, y'all. It's a game, y'all. And guess who the players are? Somebody said, Lord, I don't been played. I don't been played. I don't been played all this time. I don't been played. <laughs> we're, we're, we've been played. A few more things and we're done. Romans 1.29 says, they have become filled with every kind of weakness, evil and greed and depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossipers. I mean, just Christians gossip more now. You know, gossip, gossip and we think, <laughs> what y'all think about so-and-so? Gossiping on Facebook. It's an acceptable trait now for Christians to gossip. When gossip was a total disdain to God, still is, but now gossip is a new acceptable trait for the believers. A lot of the storms going on in the body of Christ in the earth right now is because of Christians. Because we don't know how to shut our mouth. We got something to say about everything. And I get it. Trust me, I, I, I get it. That's why I had to log out all the way out. When I come out, I come out. I don't just don't go on. I cancel my whole council. If you're looking for me on Facebook, I'm canceling for I counsel for a whole month because I've been tempted to say, this is a lie. You are dead wrong. And you have to call out some stuff. But if you find yourself constantly got to get into something, you need to get out of it. Because it starts getting in your mind and your head, and then you start looking at people with a crooked eye. Come on. And stop disliking people. Seriously, I'm telling you, it's a few I like. I don't like them no more. I don't even like it. I don't even like it. And we've been friends for five years. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm just confessing my faults you know, before one another. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Watch this here. Corey, how do we take the filters off? How, how do we take the filters off? How do we take off our proverbial filters? How do we take off other personalities? Someone else's unwarranted or unmerited expectations of you. You know, David had to take off Saul's armor. They, they, they expected David to put on what Saul wore, and David was going to do it. David put it on, and David said, this, this, this don't fit me. I got to, I got to, this don't work for me. I got to use, I got to use what I got. I know, I know the shiny object and the most attractive thing is this armor here, but I got this insignificant slingshot and a rock. I know y'all don't like it. I know y'all think it's ugly. I know it's not pretty. Nobody don't want it, but I done done some things with this slingshot and a rock. I done changed the world. I done killed some things. And I'm telling you, some of you got, a, got an anointing. Some of you got a gift. Some of you got a skill that will work, but social media has told you it don't meet the standard of how things go, and you don't put down your slingshot and a rock, and you don't put on somebody else's filter trying to do something that is not going to work. You need to pick up your slingshot and a rock and watch what God is going to do. Look what Jeremiah 6, 16 says. This is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look and ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it and you will find rest. Are you weary? Are you just tired of going through in your marriage? Are, are you tired of just tapping through social media, hearing the same? Are you, are, are you front? He said, he said, just stand still. He said, come to the crossroad of your life and just, and just ask God for the ancient 
have, the power that worked in other generations. He said, look for the way your grandma did it. Look for the way your mama and them did it. I know we so new school and got these new ways, but he said, look for the ancient paths. He said, ask where the good way is. He said, and walk in it and you will find rest. I'm telling you, if some of you want rest for your souls, you got to get out of social media. If you want rest for your soul, you got to change your circle. Somebody asked me about two weeks ago, Pastor Corey, how do I change my circle? How do you change my, how do you, how do you, how do you change the circle? And I honestly, God, I did not have an answer for that. But immediately as the question was being um, asked, the first words that came to my mouth was just, it's easy. Just open up your circle, let some people out, and let some people in. Come on, somebody. It, 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 some people got to go. Open up the circle, let some people go, and then let some people in. I'm telling you, if you're going to find rest for your soul, you got to let some people go, some things go, some ideas go. Let it go and let the right stuff come in that's going to add value to your life. That's going to be the answer you was looking for. Some of your answers cannot go because come because you got people in your circle who's taking somebody else's seat. And you need to dethrone that person and put the right people in your life who's going to add value you to what God is about to do in this season. Don't let that verse of scripture, some of you need to re- write that down and read it all week. Jeremiah 6, 16. Stand at the crossroads and look. Maybe you're at a crossroad in your life. He said, he said just stand still and look. Don't, don't, don't do nothing right now. Just stand still. You've been moving too fast. You've been talking too much. You're trying to work it out. Y'all up at, at, at two o'clock in the morning trying to figure out ain't nothing working. He said, stand still. Stand at the crossroad. You may need some counseling. I know you don't want to go, but you may need counseling or it ain't going to work. Get out of your own head and invite somebody else in. He says, stand. And watch what's going to happen. And some of you are going to find rest. Just, just imagine the, the, the peace of God. Been fighting all day, fighting all week, fighting all month. And then you find a stand still and say, God, you know what? I've been fighting. I don't know. We don't know what to do. God, we give it to you. Rest on God. Because he said, My yoke is easy and my burden is like. He said, Take my yoke. In other words, let's, let's do a great exchange. Give me all your problems and I give you all my promises. Come on, somebody. And he said, When you take, take, take what I got, you, you're not only going to learn of me. See, because this is an intimate word, you guys. When the Bible says Adam knew Eve, it, 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 that same word, when God wants us to know, it's been intimate with him. Some of you have been close to God by coming to the building. But I want to challenge some of you today to get intimate with God. Not with Hope City, not with a dream team, not with a small, not with growth track, but get intimate with God. You've been coming to the building, getting close to worship. But I need you to get close to Jesus. I need you to get close to God. I know you want to get close to Pastor Corey, but no, 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 no. You, you, you want to get close to, why? Because in his presence, there's the fullness of joy. At his right hand, there are pleasures for everything I need is in his presence. My healing is in his presence. My deliverance is in his presence. Come on, somebody. My breakthrough is in it. My peace is in if I can just get into the presence of God. He says, stand in the crossroads. Ask for the old paths. He says, you're going to find peace for your soul. I think that's a prophetic word for the house right now. Some of you need an answer. He says, your answer. He said, your peace, your, your rest is coming. Stand still. Ask for the old ways. Three things and I'm done. How do I take the filter off? Number one, get past who we were and focus on who God wants you to be. Get past who you were. Get past who that relationship was, that marriage was two years ago. It's a 20-year-old marriage now. Get past what it was 18 years ago. And focus on what God wants us to become now. With all his hardships, with all the mess up, God said, I need you to focus on now, on what it can become. On what your relationship with me can become. Romans 1.1 says, Paul, a servant of Christ, 
called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God. Your marriage, your kids, your minds, it is set apart. It's not to be compared to somebody else or with something else. God has your answers. Colossians 3, 7, 8 says, You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must also rid yourself of all such things as these. Paul said, when I was a child, I act like a child, I thought like a child, but when I became a man, I put away my boy ways of thinking. This is what this verse is saying here. Your, your, your old way of thinking, your old way of processing. You're not a single man anymore. You're a married man now. You, it just Life is different. That's not a bad thing. It's just your new reality. You're not a single woman. You're a married woman right now. You're no longer 20 years old now. You're 50 years old right now. That was then. This is now. You process different. Everything is not the devil. It's I need to change. I need to evolve. I need to grow. I need to mature so I can be the person that God has designed me to be. Not only do I need to get past who we were and focus on who God wants us to become, I need to give God permission to change everything. Give God permission. Give him access to change everything. Psalm 37, 4 says, Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart heart but the first thing is I must first delight myself in him you can't ask for a self without first delighting yourself in him because what happens is when you delight yourself in him he gives you a new heart he gives you a new desire and your desires his desires become your desires the things that pleases him become the things that wants to please you this Christian life is not hard y'all at all it's not hard the world will tell you it's hard but when Christ the Spirit of God is on the inside of you. It's not a, it's not a, I have to. It's a, I want to. It's a, I get to do this here. We're not forced to come to worship. We're not forced to serve God. We're not forced to do right. We're not forced to give our tithe and offer. We want to get why? Because we have seen the goodness of the Lord in various areas of our life. I'm almost done, I promise you here. Uh, Philippians let me finish that verse. See, he'll give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will act. I don't know about you. I got some stuff in my life right now. I need God to act. Come on, somebody. I got some stuff happening in our church. I need God to act right now. I got some stuff happening in my life. I need God to act. And he's only going to act. Come on, somebody. He is only going to act when I put my trust in him. It's that he will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Philippians 2.13 says, For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Listen, lean into God. You don't have to, you, you don't have to sweat too hard. Just go with the flow of God. Just, just, just. Give him some room. Give him some space. Give God an inch and he'll take it from there. Give him, give him something to work with. This thing is not hard. I promise you it's not. Then number three, then we're done. Not only do we get past who we were and focus on who God wants us to become, give God permission to change everything, number two. Then number three, allow the change to begin today. Do it today. Not tomorrow. Not today. Allow the change to begin today. 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Notice when the filter is taken away. When anyone ever turns to the Lord, the filter is taken away. If you find yourself living a life that is filtered, it's a possibility that you're not turning to God enough because when you learn how to turn towards him, the filters has no power over your life. And it's no longer you moving the filter and putting it on and off in your own flesh. It is not by power, not by might, but by the spirit of God. So when I turn to him, he removes the filter. You've been doing it on your own power. You've been doing it in your own strength. And that's where the struggle is at. 
But when I allow God to just take seat and become the king of my heart, he is the one that comes in and he does the moving around in my life. It says, now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all who with unveiled, unfiltered faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into not the image we see on social media, into not the images that you see in the magazine, not to the image that everybody wants you to be. Watch this here. Not even the image you had when you was a 12-year-old. Says, and we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with ever-increasing are y'all getting this? It, it, can't nobody do me like Jesus, as the old church would say. Can't nobody give you ever. It's, it's almost like God saying, I'm going to give you interest on this glory. I'm not just going to give you a new image and a new glory, but it's going to be ever increasing. Meaning the longer you walk with me, the longer you serve me. Come on, somebody. I'm going to increase you. I'm going to grow you. <laughs> oh, come on, somebody. See, when you walk with God long enough stuff that's taking other people out, you still standing. Still worshiping. You still running. Come on, somebody. I saw you running around my neighborhood about a week ago. I said, look at her. But, but, where's she going? God will renew us with strength and ways called us to mount up with wings like eagles. He will cause your marriage to mount up in this season. Come on, somebody. He will cause your faith to mount up in this season. He will cause your singlehood to mount up in this season here. Here, if you trust him, the Lord takes away the veil. Here's three things you can write down if you're taking notes, and I'm going to close right here. A filter that covers the face eventually covers the heart. A filter that covers the face it becomes a hard problem. And I know some of us do filters for fun, and, I, and, and so I'm not knocking the fun side of it. So let me say that real fast. So you say, I can have fun. The more I, the more I just do it for fun. Have your fun. Put, put your little bunny ears on yourself. Give yourself your little cat nose. Have, a, have your little fun. I'm not being religious right now. Hear my heart. If you find your identity in this stuff, you're going to begin to believe this stuff. A superficial covering ultimately becomes a spiritual condition. I'm say it again. A superficial covering ultimately becomes a spiritual condition. I've talked to people, asked them how they're doing. I'm doing great. Marriage about to go down. Just got, got, got admitted into a psychiatric ward. But, 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 but the filter says, I'm good. But on the inside, I'm broken. And the rule is, nobody's supposed to know. I'm supposed to act the part, play the part. Marriage going through, about to divorce, about to leave, and they don't even know it. But everything's great. And the worst place to wear a filter is in the house of God. The worst, the worst place to wear a filter in a place where we all should be able to come and say, this is me. This is my problem. This is my struggle right now. Is there any help for me? I'm done. We are all living for likes. And we're longing for Living for likes. But you're really longing for love. And I'm telling you, don't find your identity in all the likes. Because when the likes don't come, that's when that psychological depression, pressure kicks in. Nobody sees me. Nobody likes me. I'm going to be average. I'm never going to be. Because you're living for the likes. But you're really longing for I'm going to tell you this here. There's no greater love than a man that would lay down his life. Come on. The Bible tells us that God so loved the world that he gave 
So if you ever, ever feel like you're not loved, it's just a remember. God, God loves me. When my mother and father forsake me, God loves me. He had a purpose and a plan for my life, even before I was formed in my mother's womb. Let's give God a hand clap for his word.